the Chinese People's Liberation Army had been marching for what felt like years. This was what their leader Mao Zedong referred to as the Long March, Encountering nationalist forces along their retreat, suffering heavier losses each time, the army was on the verge of collapse. After finally reaching the mountains of Yan'an, only 8,000 men remained from what was a force of over 200,000, and on this day, Mao Zedong, the leader of the Communist Party, swore he would get revenge and liberate the people under a unified China that was ruled by the workers. Mao would dedicate his life to this, and after defeating neighbouring warlords, he would finally get his chance for revenge. But this was only one of the problems. The Japanese had always had designs on China, and the choice was his. Work with the Japanese to defeat the nationalists, or form a united front against the foreign imperial power. Hi, I'm Colonel Cam, and this is 12 Years as Communist China in Hearts of Iron 4. Communist China, here we are, one of the hardest nations to play in the game. But with historical AI turned off, the whole game depended on what Japan would do. Just really quick before we get into the video, please like and subscribe. I'm trying to reach 1,000 subscribers before I start getting into modded overhaul playthroughs. So once we reach 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to start playing mods like Kaiserreich, Red Flood, New Wave, any anything, anything you comment or suggest, I will play. But that's not until we reach 1,000 subscribers. Japanese Young Officer Coup, okay, that is so good. That is really good. That means Japan isn't going to come for our ass. Thankfully, but this could also be bad because that means China can focus on us. Because if Japan doesn't declare war on China, then we are also... Oh, so that's probably bad. Wait, is this good or bad? I actually don't even know. We'll, we'll see. Polish, Polish King. And what else? Communist coup in Ethiopia. Are we going to have some uh, Ethiopian friends? We might. I'm not, I'm not sure. But uh, what, what, which, which king? Okay, we got the Romanian dude. All right, cool. Oh, we could go to free trade. Yes? Free trade, that's good. Yeah, we're getting free trade immediately. Boom, let's do it, perfect. And now, oh, what, oh there's so many options here. I mean, this is just such a huge focus tree. I mean, there's so many options. Uh, we're probably gonna go down, with, we're gonna stay with Mao Zedong because he's probably the, the funnest path. We, uh, we improve, nah, we're, gonna, we're not building anything right now, so there's no point improving infrastructure yet. Oh, I wanna actually enforce the three rules. What are the three rules? Three rules. Follow orders. Don't steal from the peasants. Turn in everything captured from the enemy. With these simple rules, we shall will allow the people, show the people that we are on their side. And what if I get stability in Wolfsport? Okay, not too bad. Sorry about that ear rape, guys. I just thought it would be fitting to play Red Sun in the Sky as the year transition for this video. So pre be prepared for more of that. Anyway, opium. Have none. We have no factories anyway, so. And then we get government corruption, so it's, it's pointless. You'd rather do this late game, and then, but then why would you wait for this late game? Because you want to do this focus as well. So you just might as well do it early and then ban opium and then abolish the land rent. As you know, there are many warlords that surround our territory in China. And maybe, just maybe, with our luck, we could have a border conflict that we would win with one of these warlords. It's going to be this border here, right? Yes. All right, we got eight. We got ten divisions here. That can't go wrong. All right, here we go. Escalate to border... Yeah, here we go. Border conflict. Boom. We're winning. Are we winning? How does this work? Oh, it's six of these. Why do we get the trash ones? Oh, we're doing it. We're doing it. What? They're reinforcing? Nah, nah, that's not, that's not, that's not good. Come on. Let's go, General Chen Yi. I believe in you. So, I actually don't know how border conflicts work in this game, so we'll escalate this later. Don't worry. Reunification campaign. The Republic of China invites Communist China to the Chinese United Front. It appears the Chinese consider us to be of strategic interest to them, and that they deem it more profitable that we work together than what we should let ourselves be divided by ideological differences. This morning, the Chinese ambassador delivered an inv invitation for us to become a member state of the Chinese United Front. So, we can join them, join their little faction, or just, okay, well, the whole point is to just defeat them. So, I guess we have to say we're better off without them, instead of being with them, because otherwise, how would we declare war on them? So, we are better off without them. Yeah, screw you guys. Anyway, this border conflict's going on. Oh, we can have a... Do we get a chief of army real quick? See if we can, uh, you know, do something. No, nothing here that would help us. Uh, maybe one of these guys would help us. Infantry, attack and defense. Is there anything here, though, that's actually good? 
Ideological Crusader. Crusader. No, Communist, no, War, Army. Alright. Let's get one of these guys. Let's get a uh, infantry expert. Maybe you can do something. Oh, remilitarization of the Rhineland. Okay, well, I mean, that doesn't really affect us, to be honest. But there it is, I suppose. And Maoism is, is finished. So we get cheaper infantry production. Anyway, Marxism with Chinese. We can create faction. We get the mutual assistance block. That could be handy. That could be really handy. Um, there's no one here that we can reach out to. Germany wouldn't make, doesn't make much sense. Soviet Union is in a civil war. Japanese aren't, I don't know. And I don't think anyone's gonna... We have to be non-aligned. Or they have to be social, or we'll see. Um, right now we're gonna go Yen and base area. Now that we knew Japan was out of the picture, the main focus was dealing with the civil war with against the nationalists. But first we had to get the warlords out of the picture. We can focus on China. So we get division attack on core territory plus 5% and defense plus 5% on core territory. Because the Japanese are not a threat. The Japanese are they're going to annoy the Soviet Union or something. No, not us. Oh, there it is. Okay, we've officially declared war on Maklik. Yeah, it's Maklik. My cleat, man. Alright, they're walking in. Thank you. Alright, that's going a bit faster. Oh, we need to do this, yes. The nationalists would like us to fight them in the open, but we must not give in to the temptation. We will send small groups of soldiers into hostile territory to build base areas. When the time is right, we will trigger an uprising and catch the nationalists by surprise. Unlock infiltration nationalist areas decisions. So now we can, like, uh, give a surprise attack, you know? Just, and that, it's pretty good. There is only marching. Remember the long march? Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, Polish, Romania, and a crown. Boom, we encircled this division. Alright, take them out. Ah, they were too focused on this small border conflict, they didn't see us going around them. And they didn't see that, it's too hard, too hard for them to see that. And cornered no more, the Red Army once survived in a state of what seemed like hopelessness. But since the long march several years back, the tide has slowly turned. With significant territorial advances, our role as an underdog is a thing of the past. Having thought, having fought through this time of struggle, our desperation is now behind us. Mao Zedong has gone from guerrilla army leader to chairman. Long live the People's Republic. He loses Cornered Fox. No, that's terrible. But this is good. Okay, never mind then. Not a Cornered Fox anymore. He's just Mao Zedong. He's just, you know... Oh, wait, the cap- Oh, the capital's here. I swear it was just down there for a sec. Am, am I tripping, or? Oh, there it is. They've capitulated. 1,000 guns and 56. That's not too bad. All right. Select all. We have cores on everything, so our manpower should just skyrocket. There we go. Confirm and exit. 1.81 million. Yeah, there it is. There's the infinite manpower. Now we just need infinite guns, right? created the mutual assistance block now does anyone want to join the mutual assistance block Have we got any friends anywhere at all probably not I, I do not want the Soviets to join yeah no that's not happening anyway what can we do we can do this we can do this no one likes us really good you know what we can do revolutionary military commission I know what that does there it is, the German Reich declared war on the Czechoslovak Republic. And obvious- oh! Did France- okay, so France backed them up. Interesting. We can launch- no, we're not doing this yet. We're not launching a communist uprising yet. We'll wait till we infiltrate a bit more. Here we go, infiltrate Shadong. Here we go. There it is, Treaty of Moscow. Alright, so we got a- uh, These guys are only at war with Turkmenistan, they can't even reach them. They are a Japanese puppet, so going to war with Japan is going to be, well- <laughs> gonna be fun, isn't it? Wait. We got the Bolivarian Alliance and the uh, military. Okay, well, we'll focus. Democratic Federal Yugoslavia seeks to join the Mutual Assistance Bloc. This is this is crazy. They recognize that she must band together with fellow socialist republics to strengthen the place of communism in the world. Accepting our leading role in the international plight of the worker, the Yugoslavia now requests to formally enter an alliance with us? Why not? I mean, if we stand together, the revolution cannot but prevail. So, I don't see why not. There we go, look at this. 
Look at this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, wait, wait. So we actually have influence in Europe now. If you think about it, we actually have influence in Europe. I might even send, like, an army there just because, like... That's actually really cool. So we are actually really interested in what going is going on in Europe. Because now we have a fac uh, al an ally there. We can influence what happens. And maybe we can support communism here. Hey, just joined... The Sorry, the US just joined the allies now. <laughs> this is... It's okay. Wow. Things are really going crazy. Thankfully, the Chinese have made their own faction already. And they can't go and join the allies or something. Because that would be ridiculous. There we go. And Mexico just clever on the US. Okay, wow. Things are going very... It's 1939 and we've already got, like, World War Three. <laughs> World War Three. World War Two was already gone. We've got Turkey in the Axis now. Okay. People's Liberation Army. The Chinese Red Army has accomplished great deeds. In the future, it will win, win even greater honours as we fight to liberate our people. There we go. Red Army weakened goes away. We actually get some organisation regain and other stuff. One of our neighbouring warlords was down, and now the other one on the other side had to go. The Shanxi state, province, warlord, country, I don't know what it is at this point, but we are going to take it down. Retake core state. You are going down. That is for sure. All right. There we go. There we go. Here's an encirclement. There it is. Beauty. <laughs> Zemsky Sabor dismantled. All right, we've got the Russian national state. This is the first game we've had the Russian. Let's take a look at the ideology map. Look at this ideology map, man. This is the most cursed ideology map in the entire world. I want this war to end, and then we're going to have a look at it, and it's going to be so funny. It's going to be great. Attacking a mountainous capital like our neighbor Shanxi is really difficult because they would just reinforce it, and pushing through the mountains is uh, very good for the defenders. So, But eventually, after we threw enough men at them, like, you know, because we had infinite manpower, we eventually beat them. Nine. Oh, don't you dare move another troop into there. Don't you dare. Oh, we've done it, we've done it, we've done it. They capitulated. That was uh, so much harder than it should have been. Wow. That was really difficult. And right, there we go. Look at us now. Too strong. Finally, all of the warlords were defeated, and we had no time to waste in turning our attention to the nationalists. We were going to launch a, uh, launch a communist uprising as soon as possible and catch them off guard, and hopefully we would come out on top. Communist uprising. That'll take 60 days. Hang on. Okay, that was kind of anticlimactic. Never mind. See you in 60 days. Oh! Czechoslovakia just declared war on Hungary. I was going to say, like, oh, you know, Yugoslavia could declare war on Hungary. Maybe that'll do something. No, look at that. They, Czechoslovakia has had enough of them. Enough of them already. And they're part of the Czech Entente, so yeah. They were, oh, we just we just declared war. I didn't even see that. I just realized. We, <laughs> I didn't even look. All right. Communist to China just declared war on the Republic of China. All right. I'm glad we paused there because I could have just kept that running. But in a moment of confusion, something went wrong. The nationalists thought that the communists weren't the ones attacking. They thought it was the Japanese that were attacking them. So instantly, the, ja the nationalists declared war on the Japanese in order to fight for their freedom, not realizing it was actually communist forces attacking them. So suddenly, it was a 2v1. Oh my god! China just declared war on Manchuria. We can invite Japan into the mutual assistance block. Nah, that's not right. That wouldn't, that wouldn't be right, because we actually have lands that we need. That just wouldn't make sense. No, we're not, we're not going to accept this. 1941 was fast approaching, and both Communist China and the Japanese were attacking the nationalists. But after the war was over, who would lay claim to the conquered lands? Would the Japanese claim the rightful Communist lands that we and our people were served under? Or would we just go straight to another war? Three hundred and eight. How am I supposed to be Japan? Oh my god, it's mad. What? What? They're at zero percent because they just. Nah, man. What is that? That's not a thing, man. See, look, the AI was just straight up cheating at this point. That's literally just cheating. Like, what is that? Anyway, um, it all worked out in the end because I think they just changed their name and then they 
got back all the victory points that had been lost. Okay, okay, cool. They're back to 79. It's back to the Republic of China. Okay. They, oh no, they've just changed their name. But their capital is still here. They're actually, dude, this AI is so intelligent. They knew that this was like the cause, like the main cause of uh, the old China. They literally just never made it down here. That's insane. We're at 41. We actually went up. Okay, good, 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 good. Capitulate them now, please. There we go. There's capitulation. All right. Now we are. Japan does have the most points. Um, I just want to secure as much as we can. It's really cheap for us because we have, we have cores. Look at this. 20, 20. Can we get everything? Can we sneak everything? No, not everything. But we get a lot. They're going to contest us for, like, this area. We'll leave that till last. And we'll try and get south here. Well, that's pretty good. There we go. They're going to try and... Oh, they... Should we give them Queen Dao? We can forfeit... Qing Dao. And then get the rest. And we'll be right. That's for their efforts. We'll applaud them. Anything else China owned? There's obviously this here. Um, is that everything? Yeah, it should be. Oh, we'll, we'll contest. <laughs> we'll test King Dao again. No, you're not getting it. Fine. Oh, we're actually so strong now. Is that everything? Beijing. Beijing's ours. No. No doubt. Oh my god, we they did like a majority of the work and we just stole absolutely everything. What did they get? Did they get a single thing? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Had to be done. It is that we are they are our cause. Okay, we have a bunch of things. 19 million manpower. You know, I'm gonna go to limited because we can. Yeah, so we just kind of scam them out of their whole invasion, but but it's fine because they weren't the one who was declaring war, you know? They were just kind of defending themselves, so they I'm sure they'd be happy to let us have it. Anyway, now that we were the main China in town, it was time to proclaim the People's Republic. Over the nationalists, it is time to take our rightful place as the legitimate government of China. Much work still remains to be done. Yeah, Japan is kind of in, in the way, but future looks brighter than ever. We will now be called the People's Republic of China. Look at this and we'll have a, we'll have a new flag, it'll be the, the one that is used in the current day. We can move the capital. Yeah, move the capital, okay, we can choose Chinese capital. With the end of the Chinese Civil War, it is time for us to consolidate power in China and show the people that we are the modern incarnation of the Middle Kingdom. We are the state, we are the state that will guide them into the future. To this end, we should have a capital benefiting our great state. So we can go Beijing, Nanjing, or there is no need. Okay, well, I'm not keeping it as here. That doesn't make much sense. Supply is going to flow out of it. Beijing is good. And we can keep it at... We can go to... Uh, Be we'll keep, Beijing. I mean, we have to go to Beijing, don't we? There it is. Beijing is like... A, <laughs> it's right next to Japan, but, you know... Some sacrifices have to be made. to be done, right? We are the real China. And Tibet is something we're going to do in the future. I might as well start conquering for Tibet now. And then we just have it. And same with these guys. Japan is justifying on them. Well, I will as well. Wait. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. We can invite these guys to our faction? Uh, no. Not right now. No, we're not doing that. Sorry, mate. You're going to have to get left behind. Anyway, we got a research slot. Oh, we, oh, we did it. We, we, we're now the People's Republic. His dream has been fulfilled. Well, not really. It's Japanese still exists. But he's a very happy man. He's a very happy man right now. Now we just got a anti-Japanese, no, not yet. Socialist market economy. Uh, yeah, sure. And we remove recovery from the long march. Thank all the Lord. And now with one war finished, well, the second war done, it was time for another war to begin. There we go, we can declare war in Tibet now. Uh, let's do it, straight away. Tibet. Sorry, even though you don't, we don't get cores on you. Don't care. We haven't had a European update for a while, so let me show you what's going on in Europe real, real quick. They actually, uh, they're trying to get rid of my friend, apparently. The lot. oh my god, man. No, they're really gonna take Slovenia? From us? They're not even in, they're not even in the faction, though. I might have to send, like, a... 
I'm gonna try and create a new theater. I'm gonna send like Chinese troops over there because you know why not? All right, come on, take the capital right here. 98. Imagine, imagine the capital just like moves. That'd be too funny. All right, what are they? 90, 96. Where's the okay? The next capital's here. It's not even a capital. Oh, we have a supply. We have a supply hub. Okay, railway. This is more important than the other one. Uh, okay, here, here, here. Uh, bruh. Uh, we'll go. No, we'll go here to. Go we'll here to. There, perfect. The United States of America seeks to join the mutual assistance block. <laughs> Hang on, wait. The U USA, the one currently in the Allies, wants to join the mutual assistance block. Do they want to help take out Japan or something? You know what? Why not? Why not? This makes the game so much easier and it might go a bit faster, especially landing in Japan. Might actually be viable. And whether we shall, they leave the allies, they join... Oh my gosh. Come on. Did they do it? Did it lie to me? Did it lie to me? No way, it just lied to me. Yep, they straight up just lied. They did not join our faction. I think they were trying to make a mockery out of us or something. I took offense to that. Quite, it was very, very upset. There we go. Tibet just capitulated. Perfect. Select all. Commit demands. Firm and exit. Beautiful. Now, we can... Wait, was this... What army was that? It's this army. And now... We're under here. Come up from behind. Germany's gone crazy. Germany's at war with the Entente again. Germany's gone for round two, apparently. Because they declared war on... Okay, they still have a lot of divisions. That's crazy. Now, Hungary proclaims Greater Hungary. Let's have a look at them. <laughs> that's not very great. <laughs> it's not very great Hungary. I don't know about you, but that's pretty... Cool. Whoa! The Czech Entente is at war with the Allies? That is a uh, certainly a, a huge final showdown right here, guys. Ooh. Now, I've been playing, paying very close attention to what's going on in Europe just because France. France has territories that we have cause on, and I'm very eager to get a hold of them. So when I looked over to Europe, I was very happy to see France was about to lose the war, and then that main, means if I declared war on them, I could get their land. Justify, retake core state. Uh, this little bit's ours. Now this was something very clever, but because that I declared war on a member of the Czech Entente, that means also all the other nations in China that I had to try and capitulate that I couldn't get past joined the Czech Entente, and they weren't majors. So that meant as soon as Czechoslovakia capitulate, they would be a peace deal. How long is it going to take to defeat the... Surely. There we go. Prague has fallen. Is that going to be a peace deal that we're a part of? Oh my god, that makes things so much easier. So because we declare war on them, these guys actually become part of the Czech Entente. And because they're not a major, we actually get... Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Okay, so obviously we have all goals there. Here, here. Uh, obviously we want all of Xinjiang. There we go. Uh, we'll take this as well. The north. We could even take the south here. I'll take that. We have a lot more points than I thought. Okay, is there anything else? We could take some navy. Who should we take the navy of? France. Ugh, can't afford it. You know, I'm willing to give up this if that means we can get a navy. Low key. What happened? Oh, we can still get this. You can still get it. Okay. And then Navy. Select all their Navy. Good. Any more land that we can grab? Uh, outside of... Maybe outside of Asia. I'm not really interested in any of that. Oh, there goes... Okay, cool. Alright, that's fine. Yeah, I'm happy with that. There's nothing that I forgot, right? France hasn't got any more little colonies that I'm worried about. No. Alright, that's it. Cool. Pass. I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. Alright, confirm and exit. 
The Treaty of Paris. There, oh, Mexico's global in Ecuador. It's still going crazy. Look at us. Now, there was only one enemy left for us to conquer and reclaim all of our unified lands, and that was the Japanese. They obviously had lands in Mankuko and Manchukuo, which were caused to us, and ethnically Chinese citizens that we had to liberate under the Chinese Red Banner. So, we couldn't just declare outright, outright war on them, though. We had to do some anti-Japanese expeditions. For base areas, when the time is right, we will call the uprising. It'll be an anti-Japanese expedition decisions. All this. Okay, so we can do the uprising. We declare war on them. What do these do? Yeah, it's just the same as what we did in nationalist China. Right. Or we can provoke Japan. There we, know. there we go. Release Laos and Cambodia. Since they are completely useless. Yeah. There we go. Oh, we can do. There we go. We can start sabotaging them. Here, beautiful. Look at this. We got a Laos, Lao People's Democratic Republic. Yes, and we got a. Oh, wrong one. People's Republic of Cambodia. There's a Pol Pot. A Pol Pot. If you guys, if you guys know who this guy is, like in real life and what he did, well, yeah, he was very, a very evil man. I almost feel bad for putting the. I can. I almost feel bad for putting him in charge of Cambodia right now. That's not good. The people are all leaving the city. This. <laughs> uh oh. USA cancelled the non-aggression pact. No. Three generations we have lived under the shadow of the Japanese threat. Opposition to Japanese expansion will make us heroes in the eyes of the Chinese people. And if the Japanese do not want to give us the, the war we need, we will make them. So yeah, we can provoke Japan, and when decision is selected, uh, four things will happen. I hope we don't go to war yet. Oh my god. Russia just declared war on Japan. Russia is at war with- oh my god, Russia is done for. Hang on, maybe we can partner with Russia. Turkey joined. Provoke Japan, finished. Is there anything? Provoke Japan. Yes, we'll do it again. Now we are in a scenario that is very similar to what could happen in real life with World War III. We've got a, a fascist Russia, well it's obviously not that far right in real life, and we've got a communist China against the Allies. Literally the rest of the world. This is essentially what the whole world war is going to be in World War III. Probably, most likely, I don't know what's going to happen, I can't predict the future. But we had a really interesting scenario on our hands. The only issue is, we had no navy. So we could not stop any naval invasions. Of night, our comrades in Manchuria have managed to sabotage a vital bridge. The small commando force reports that the bridge has been completely destroyed and took ammun and took an ammunition train with it as it collapsed. They may, they have, ha they hey, it, they, where's the tea, bro? There's no tea. They have made sure to be seen by the locals, making it clear that this was an act of sabotage. It remains to be seen if this will prompt the Japanese into action. We have struck the hornet's nest. Okay. Uh, what's gonna happen? If Japan declares war- actually no, there will be a war with the Allies anyway. Japan declares war at us. Not NATO. Wow, okay, the European Confederacy is spreading. South America? Wow, 1945, what a year. We went- we made it to unprecedented heights and then fell to lower lows than you could ever imagine all in this year. Just- just wait and see. Mobile warfare, done. All right, 100 ready rooms campaign. We have focused on small battles and skirmishes for now. Our enemies think us weak and more newest new nuisance. Us a weak and mere nuisance. Lulled into a sense of security, they will be ill prepared for a major offensive. Unlocks decision, launch 100 regiments offensive. So that'll happen pretty soon after we declare war on them, probably. Something like that. There we go. We declared war. We declared war. We declared war. We can invite Mongolia. We can invite Mongolia to our faction. That is perfect. All right, Mongolia, we've welcome on board. Welcome on board. All right, we're gonna extend that front line. Hang on, they gotta accept first. All right, good, they accepted. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Now we can wrap around. We can go all the way there. <laughs> now, I'm sorry, I, I literally just remembered Hong Kong. Like as soon as, as soon as war was declared. I don't know about this, though. Oh, here we go. Breaking through. Oh.
Yeah, we, our navy just got destroyed. Oh no. Yeah, our navy just got destroyed. Bruv. Oh my god, we got three boats now. Three submarines. You are witnessing the first of many naval invasions that I could not keep under control. It, even with our hundreds of billions of trillions of manpower, we didn't even have enough guns to put to train troops, so I don't know. Why has Russia given us? Oh god, we got, we got, oh. Oh. Oh god. <laughs> oh no. Yep, there goes our strongest ally. Wasn't even in my faction, but we were fighting the same enemies and they just absolutely got destroyed. So I, I don't know if there's any hope for me at this point. I can't even close this out. Look at this, they're invading here. We cut the port off. There's a port there though. At least this port, get it cut off. Now at this point, I made a save game. This is for you guys to try at home. From now on, I'll be making all my save games available to my Patreons. More on this at the end of the video. I mean, look at all these naval invasions. Another one just came through. I don't know if anyone can beat this. This is like impossible. The only thing you've got is unlimited manpower, but you don't even have enough guns. This, another one. How do we keep up with this? I reckon some of this blue army can can do with this. Took Nanjing back, very good. We've got new divisions coming over to defend this front. This is hopefully gonna turn well and it turn good in a sec. I mean, you can hear it in my voice. I'm completely done. I, this is unwinnable. They were going up through Korea. They were literally had the whole coast of full of naval invasions. A part of my army was encircled. This was just, I, I is uncontrollable. Yes. Why are the Netherlands invading me? No, get out of here. That you're done for. Yep. And here's another save. I'll call this one hard mode because if you're especially daring, I don't, I don't think anyone. Maybe you'll survive this. I don't know. Why is it going? Who's that? They can't do that. That's cheating. That's genuinely cheating. They've actually just gone and cheated. Oh, we'll encircle you instead. How does that sound? But no. Nah. Oh, what do you mean Polish Lithuanian? They've just gone from the Polish-Romanian to the Polish-Lithuanian. So we had the Polish-Lithuanian last game, the Polish-Romanian the game before that, and now we had both! We had both this game. It's kind of mad. It's lost. That's it. Man, it's... Uh, okay, what happened? Whoa, look at our... Okay. French Republic joined the Allies. So, what happened to us? We are now... Oh, he's still around. The National Republic of China. News right now. We got the Republic of China and the National Republic of China. Wait, what is it? Is everything just in the Allies? There's a faction. Where's the faction map? There we go. Oh, F10. Oh my god. Damn, ideology. No more socialism. It's all de democracy and then Japan. Except for Australia and that. I don't know what they're doing. But it's all Allies. I would like to thank my Patreons. They are the ones who vote on the nation I play, and I would also like to announce a new part of my Patreon, Disaster Saves. All my Patreons will now be able to have access to all of my late game files and try them for yourself. If you think you can do better than me in this game, then go ahead, try it for yourself. The link is in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Remember, I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers, so I'd really appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.